welcome to or back to my channel my name is Maddie and this is a continuation video off of my last video so if you didn't watch it please go check it out I am beyond thrilled with how many views it got thank you guys so much that watched it that liked it that subscribed that left comments anything really helps me out not only for you know the YouTube feed but also for my own self-confidence I wanted to put that in there before I started this video because I don't know it just made me so happy to see that um, starting off this video it's about my egg freezing process that like I said is a continuation of my last video to do with Hodgkin's lymphoma I was told there was a possibility because of my cancer I might become infertile and aka go through menopause at a very very early age so I was terrified of losing the chance to be a mother someday um, that's also why I'm wearing my beanie the child um baby yoda star wars the mandalorian if you don't know it by now you gotta look it up cute aggression as my mom likes to call it but yes i wanted to make sure that i would be able to have kids one day so going through the egg freezing process was one way that i could assure that as a possibility um to start this off my family was really helpful at this entire process my aunt started looking up different organizations that could possibly help out financially especially because it is extremely expensive to have your eggs frozen um, it's a couple thousand dollars all around between the medicine the freezing of themselves and the surgery so I used the chick mission um, with this woman named Amanda she is absolutely fantastic I emailed her she was nothing but supportive and led me to IRMS who is part of st. Barnabas that's the Institute for reproductive medicine and science they are great like I was saying I spoke to a woman named Michelle she was my nurse there and she led me through step by step what was going to happen through the medicine that I was we receiving which was Gonal F Menopure Novarel and I believe that Novarel was the trigger shot but I'll get a little bit into that later she also instructed how to give the shots which I didn't end up doing my father did because I was absolutely terrified to do it so having there was a real help even but while we were there um, at Michelle's office my dad did come with he was shown how to do it on a little plastic thing but that is nothing compared to doing it on a human body. So. When it came time to actually giving me the shots, my dad needed a little bit of help, so he called over my cousin Nick, so shout out to him, and he showed him how to do the first one. After that, my dad was doing it like a pro, and we had to continue to actually do shots up until my last chemo treatment, simply because of white blood cell shots. That's a completely different time for a completely different video, but yeah, I was getting shots in my lower abdomen, for a very long time, pretty much the entire time that I was sick. With that being said, everything went pretty smoothly for the most part with the appointments, which I had to go to almost every morning, and those nurses would help you set them up. I was able to go to my Clark location, which is closer to me than the Livingstone location where IRMS is located at St. Barnabas. And they do blood work every time you come in which became a daily thing so every other day for the first week I would go in and you get blood work done and they would check the size or the growth of your ovaries and then I went in the first weekend we had to be there at 6 a.m. and they then checked the weekly growth of your ovaries it was <laughs> really annoying to wake up so early but such is life um, it was really amazing to see how many women in their mid to late 30s are really there and it's amazing to see how much technology has come such a long way to give that option to those women that really didn't want to wait to start their careers and start their lives and be able to have kids later on in life and even up until their 40s have kids that late and maybe not have that risk that you would possibly have of just having a, a normal um contra um normal um you uh, the way you normally conceive kids so 
it was really amazing to see that that so many women are taking advantage of such a great opportunity even though it was completely different for me i was only seeing one girl and that was the second week that i went um that was my age and i wonder if she had the same issues as i do or what was going on with her but it was a little bit comforting to see that i wasn't the only really young person it was funny we were both there with our dads that time the first time with my mom the second time my dad took over because it like i said it was extremely early that we were going after the weekends well the first weekend i was becoming extremely stressed between the phone calls making sure medicine was getting here on time thinking about the chemo getting that all squared away uh, I was constantly worried constantly stressed um, looking back at the diary that I wrote in every day it's just constant I'm stressed I'm stressed I'm stressed when does chemo come can I just start this can I just get it over with because there's not only iron mess that you're dealing with or even the thought of going through chemo you have to be calling numerous different organizations to make sure your medication is going forward they have the freedom fertility mandel's pharmacy live strong and the heartbeat program um the heartbeat program and live strong are the ones that authorize you to be able to get the medication for a little to no cost which then in turn goes to freedom fertility and mandel's pharmacy who gives the medication since they can't just take your word for it or they can't just take the doctor's word for it you have to actually fill out medica medication lists for them as well as who your oncologist is why you are going for this what kind of cancer you have so it it, it takes a lot and i'm just happy that i had people behind me instructing me and helping me out every step of the way because if i didn't I'd be so lost probably back at square one as we speak. Um, then we get on to this actual surgery, which is two weeks after you start everything, like the shots and seeing the nurses in the morning, getting your blood work and getting the test results of your growth. So at this point, your ovaries should be the size of out a grapefruit. And you go in two days after taking your trigger shot or one or two days out before after taking your trigger shot and then they put you under anesthesia and you're asleep for 30 minutes and they extract the eggs from your ovaries and then they let you know how many that that you received so i received 28 eggs but only 20 of them 21 of them are viable i won't be able to know if i'm able to actually use those to be a healthy baby until i go to actually use them aka getting a male's dna putting it together creating an embryo aka creating a baby so after that um i was able to advise to take it easy the following days i didn't take it easy i went to work and that was probably a bad decision because i was in a lot of pain after my surgery that's what they're afraid of is because the fluid can possibly go up into your lower abdomen and basically be filling up with fluid you don't want to do that but thankfully i wasn't having that done even though like i said it was extremely painful i couldn't laugh i couldn't take deep breaths in but i just it turns out i just needed to take a break i was beyond stress like i was saying and i just needed to relax that's really what it was and so i did that for a couple days and then at that point um it was almost time for chemo i got my surgery done on march 8th March 10th was my chemo, so it was fast. It was a lot to think about in a couple days, and but it happened, you know, and I'm thankful that it happened. And now I have my little eggs stored in a freezer for five years, five years specifically because that is how long IRMS for cancer patients keep the eggs for free. Uh, after that, I have to pay $1,000 to keep them stored and now like i said that's only for cancer patients i believe it's a thousand dollars a year in general if you just want to keep them i think it's a small price to pay for your child especially if you can afford it so at that point when i'm 
26 years old, I would probably pay the thousand or end up paying the two thousand so I'm 27 years old and have the possibility of having my first kid and seeing where that goes. But thankfully, they do last forever as long as they're frozen. So in the, in the very beginning, before you start everything, they make you watch um, very informational videos on the process of egg freezing, what you'll be experiencing, what happens to the eggs, how long they can last, and all the questions that you need answered, they have answered. So I would really advise people that if they are going to IRMS or really any um, egg freezing for t um, facility to look at all the questions you need answered first and make sure that they have those questions answered. If you don't have a question answered, ask the doctor. Maybe that's, that fertility clinic's not the one for you. So continue looking. I just really recommend IRMS because that's the one I went to. It's really easy for me to get to in the tri-state area and they have multiple different locations. They're, like I said, their home offices in St. Barnabas and Livingston, but I went to the one most of the time in Clark, which is only five minutes away from my house. The one thing also I wanted to mention, prior to starting everything, they tell you you need to get off birth control, whether it be the, the stick in your arm, um, an IUD, or um, birth control. So that's what I had to do. And one thing that may always made me laugh is how much weight I lost within that month because I was expecting to lose so much weight along the way through chemo because of what you exp what you hear that people get sick and they're not able to keep down food and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. I didn't have to deal with that because of steroids and I was able to eat very well. But in that month span I lost 10 pounds and that was just being off birth control. So I would say that the only time that I really lost weight in this whole process was because of that and I really just thought that was funny and to, to include that so if you yourself are um, gaining weight or losing weight and you realize you, that you are changing contraceptives of certain sorts, that could be why. That is really all I have for this video. I really wanted to include the most that I could and keep it short and sweet so I hope I answered any questions that somebody may be thinking about fertility or egg freezing and if you ever are going for it for yourself that I answered some of those questions that you might have been having and I hope if there is any questions that I didn't answer you can leave them in the comments below and I can give you the best answer as possible so thank you so much for watching please continue to watch my further videos because I would like to make another one at least about my chemo experience and then furthermore it's becoming holiday season and I really like the I like to really like to decorate I really like to bake and I really like to do um seasony things whether it be going to the city for Christmas or going apple picking or pumpkin picking or going to see the leaves change and all the way up until Easter I like to do stuff so please keep up with my videos and like share subscribe or just view the video even if you just you know 15 seconds each time I don't care any support helps so thank you so much for watching and have a great day